Shalom, Most High Christ bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Josiah. With me, I have Officer Abraham. So today's topic is going to be the new year. Okay, the new year. Society has a new year set up and God has a new year set up in his Bible. Okay, so we set up this lesson today to educate you on what God has set up, not society. So let's begin with uh, Colossians 2 and 8. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So the Bible says, beware, lest any man spoil you through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. Vain lies. After the tradition of men. That's the key right there. After the tradition of men. So we got to make sure the things we're doing is not after the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. It's not after the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. And we're following things that's not after this Bible. We got to beware of those things. All right. Give me Colossians on, um, not Colossians, Wisdom of Solomon 14. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 16. Chapter 14, verse 16. Thus, in process of time, and it says, in process of time, throughout time, time went on. Come on. An ungodly custom, an ungodly custom, meaning not out of this Bible, grown strong, uh -huh. was kept as a law. Was kept as a law. What are we talking about today? The new year. What do we call it today? January 1st, okay? Or New Year's Eve, beginning December 31st into January 1st. These are ungodly customs grown strong, kept as laws now. Read it one more time. Was it Messiah 14, verse 16? Mm -hmm. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong. An ungodly custom grown strong. Was kept as a law. It was kept as a law, meaning what? That means everybody does it. As a society, everybody keeps this particular custom. Come on. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. Now, what is that going into? Graven images were worshipped. We're talking about today, the new year. Uh, January 1st comes from the idol Janus. It was an idol, okay? A Roman deity, all right? Give me Daniel 7, 25. Daniel chapter seven, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the most high. The he is the fourth kingdom, meaning the Roman empire now today into America. He shall do what? Speak great words against the Most High. Uh -huh. and shall should speak great words against the Most High. That's those ungodly customs. That's those traditions of men we read about. Read on. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. How did he wear us out in slavery? Okay. He put us in slavery and wore us out. Taught us many traditions against the Bible. Come on. And think to change times and laws. And do what? Think to change times and laws. He shall think to change times and laws. Okay, just like we read about, an ungodly custom was grown and taught as a law, right? Right. But he shall think to change times and laws. Now, you got to ask yourself, how, how does he think to change time? Because you can't change time. The way God set up time, you can't change it. So they thought to change it. How? Give me um, the Janus right there. Give me that. Now, the term January, again, comes from the idol, the Roman deity, uh, Janus. Okay, read that for me. This is origin of the meaning of Janus by Online Etymology Dictionary. Mm -hmm. Janus, ancient uh, Italic deity mm -hmm. to the Romans. Meaning Italy. Read on. To the Romans, the guardian god of portals. It says the guardian god of portals. Okay, come on. Doors and gates. Doors and gates. Come on. Patron of beginnings and endings. The patron of beginnings and endings. That's why. December 31st, you make New Year's resolutions into January 1st, okay? Do, the, the deity of portals and doors, the openings and beginnings of things, all right? Read it again. Janus, ancient Italic deity to the Romans, the guardian god of portals, mm -hmm. doors and gates, uh -huh. patron of beginnings and endings. Read on. He is shown as having two faces. Now, this particular idol is shown as having two faces. Read on. One in front, the other in back. So basically the faces uh, point away from each other. Okay, one in the front, one in the back. Is that it? They may represent sunrise and sunset and reflect an original role as a solar deity. So originally this may have been a solar deity. 
Okay, the most I told us, don't be uh, dismayed at the signs of heaven. Right. Right. But the, the, a lot of these guys, these Romans and these other nations set up their idols. Okay. Representing sun, moon and the stars and so forth. Uh, worshiping them. Okay. I'll say it like that. Worshiping them. Right. So now from there, give me um, uh, Colossians 2 and 8 one more time. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit uh -huh. after the tradition of men. You know why it's a tradition of men? The Most High never is not written in the Bible anywhere to keep a month called Janus or January. It's not in the Bible to honor that particular uh, day. Read on. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. And that's not after Christ because it's not written in this Bible anywhere. So now let's actually show when the new year begins according to the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. So give me Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, let's start at verse 2. Exodus chapter 12, verse 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It says, this month, this is in the Bible, this month shall be unto you what? As... It shall be unto you the beginning of months. The beginning of months. It shall be the first. It, it shall be the first month of the year to you. This particular month shall be the first month of the year to you. You that follow the Most High and His laws under Christ, this one is going to be the first to you, not Janus or not January. Okay. Now, how do we determine months? Let's get that in Sirach forty-three, real quick. Sirach chapter forty-three. Because it says, this one shall be unto you the beginning. So how is time determined according to the scriptures? Read what you got. Sirach, chapter 43, verse 7. From the moon is the sign of feasts, mm -hmm. a light that decreaseth in her perfection. What is 6? Start at 6. Verse 6. He made the moon also to serve in her season. It says, the Most High made the moon to serve in her seasons. For a declaration of times. For what? A declaration of times. The moon declares times. So again, when he said back in Exodus 12, this one shall be to you the beginning, okay? That moon declared the times, okay? Read on. And a sign of the world. Mm -hmm. From the moon is the sign of feast. From the moon is the sign of feast. You determine uh, feast days, Passover, Pentecost, and so forth based on the moon itself. Read on. A light that decreases in her perfection. It says a light that decreases when it's perfected. Okay, it's perfected when it's full, and then it decreases from that. Real? The month is called after her name. The what? The month is called after her name. So now, it says the month is called after the moon. So go back to Exodus 12 real quick. It says the month is called after her name. Read that again. Exodus chapter 12, verse 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. This month shall be unto you the beginning. Read. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So he was showing Moses this moon, right, is the first month of the year to, do, to you. That's what he was showing. Him. Right. Okay, the, the full moon that was in the sky at that time, he was saying this one is going to be the first to you. Okay, because it says the month is called after uh, the moon. All right, is that it? Mm -hmm. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 16. Now let's determine the the name of that particular month or moon, for example, read. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1. Observe the month of Abib. Do what? Observe the month of Abib. This is a commandment of God. He says, observe the month of Abib, not Janus. Right. Okay, observe the month of Abib, read on. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. That's why it says the month is a sign of feast, okay, because after the moon, you counted 14 days into the Passover. That's what that's going into. But you had to observe the first, the beginning of the month in order to count those days into Passover. Read again. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. In the month of Abib, the Israelites came out of Egypt. Okay. So now, give me that in the Zondervan, uh, Abib. Let's see what that word means out of the uh, Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Abib means an ear of corn. The pre exilic name for the... So, a bib means the ear of corn or a ear of corn, right? Mm -hmm. Read on. The pre exilic name for the first month of the year. 
the pre-exilic, so before we went into captivity under Assyria, Babylon, and so forth, we called it Abib. Read on. After the exile, the name was changed to Nisan. So after the exile, it was changed to Nisan under the Assyrians and Babylonians and so forth. So now, that's it? Uh, it fell about the time of our march in early April. So wait a minute. The first month of the year to God says it fell when? The time of our early March and April. So between March and April is actually when the new year begins. And our March and April, the new moon and the new year begins actually then. It's not in January after the idol called Janus. All right. Give me that uh, definition of Nissan as well. <clears throat> Nisan. Nisan. On the Assyrian calendar is the first month. And so now that's why it says that that's the post exhibit name because after in the Assyrian captivity, other names began to be adopted. Read it again. On the Assyrian calendar is the first month and on the Hebrew calendar is the first month. So now on the Hebrew calendar, meaning according to the Bible, Nisan is the first month. It was originally called Abib. Read on. On the first is the first month on the ecclesiastical year. Mm -hmm. In the Torah, it is called the month of Aviv. Aviv, A V I V, or Abib, same thing. Come on. It is a spring month. It is a what? Spring month. So the new year actually begins in the spring. In the spring. Okay? That's why everything feels new around springtime. Everybody wants to clean, we call it spring cleaning and so right. forth. You have that new feeling all over again. It is what? It is a spring month uh -huh. of 30 days. Uh -huh. Nisan usually falls in March, April on the Gregorian calendar. So now under the Gregorian calendar, what we have today in society, the new moon or the new year begins during that time period, March between March and April, depending on when that first new moon falls during those, those two months right there. That's the actual beginning of the new year according to God. Okay, now it said the, uh, a bib means ear of corn. Now, that's not talking about corn in the sense of corn on the cob, okay? It's going into wheat. Give me that in Exodus chapter 9 real quick. Let's show them that. Exodus 9, yeah. Start at 30. Exodus chapter 9, verse 30. This is going into one of the plagues in Egypt, okay? Read that. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that ye will not yet fear the Lord God. It says, after you and your servants, I know what? I know that ye will not yet fear the Lord God. Come on. And the flax and the barley was smitten. It says, and the flax and the barley, these are wheat crops. These are crops that were grown up in, in Egypt during that time period. And the flax and barley what? Was smitten. Were smitten. This is during the, um, the, the uh, plague of what the hell, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so during that plague, these particular crops had grown up during that time. And they were smitten. Why? Because they had grown up. These are spring uh, crops growing up during the springtime. Read it again. And the flax and the barley was smitten, uh -huh. for the barley was in the ear. The barley was in the ear. That's why a bib means ear of corn. Ear of corn. Not in the sense of corn, but wheat. Okay, read it again. The barley was what? For the barley was in the ear, uh -huh. and the flax was bold. Uh -huh. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten. Uh -huh. For they were not grown up. So the wheat and the rye were not grown up at that particular time. But these particular crops, barley and flax, were grown up during the time of a bid. Okay? So go back to Colossians 2 and 8 real quick. So according to God, the new year begins in the springtime. That first full moon in springtime, that's the beginning of the year according to God. So he said in Deuteronomy 16 and 1, observe the month of a bid. And he also said, hear what? Colossians 2 verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Uh-huh. So yeah. be warned lest you be spoiled through philosophy and vain lies. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. These things are not after Christ. Okay, so us coming back, repenting, understanding who we are according to the Bible, we cannot continue to keep these ungodly customs like Janus. Okay, worshiping a, a solar deity. Okay, the God of openings and, and closings or beginning and endings. Okay, we got to come away from these things, Israel. So, Lord willing, y'all got something out of today's lesson. With that, we say shalom. Shalom.
but you will sound odd For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's our black man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.